Okay, this, I'm the sort of sober, analytical one <laughs> in the middle of between charisma and comedy. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, I think that boredom is associated to consciousness. I think actually that the question is a positive one, not a negative one. I mean, we can all sit there going, oh, it's because theatre's dead and I'll... But actually it's because theatre is a place of heightened consciousness in a way that I think is one of the things that Peggy may have just have been demonstrating to us. Uh, it's a place where we are most alive, most awake, uh, or we want to be most awake, and we feel closer to other people. It's unavoidable, our freedom and our consciousness, when we're there. Um, and therefore, when a dishonesty happens, which happens a lot in life, after all, but when it happens on stage or in a theatre, when a dishonesty happens, it's just glaringly apparent to everyone in a way that perhaps it isn't in a, on the bus or when we're having breakfast or even here. Uh, it's so glaringly apparent that we, ha we would have to do a, a staggeringly dishonest thing to avoid it. Um, and, uh, and that dishonesty happens in the theatre quite a lot. Uh, and we sit there feeling that. And that's why boredom in the theatre is a uniquely murderous boredom. It's not a boredom of quiet boredom, at least not, it's not for me, and I don't think it's for anyone. I think it's a killing boredom. It's do you want to take the actor and kill them and their children, <laughs> which is really, it's that strong. It's a very, it is a strong feeling, isn't it? We must accept that. It's an enormously strong feeling. It's a ridiculously strong feeling. It's only an hour. It's only an hour and 20 minutes. For God's sake, get over it. It's not that bad. Yes, it is. It's terrible. <laughs> It's absolutely terrible, and that the reason for that actually is that we are at our greatest and most alive, perhaps with the exception of sex, we are at the greatest and most alive. And it would, the only thing I can think of that would have been similar is when you were in church, and if you were a real believer, and you went to church really believing, and then you suddenly were in the church and you realised that the person who speaks to you didn't, doesn't believe, and the people next door might not, and that moment of crushing terror and disillusion uh, is deeply personal and felt. Um, uh, I, I, I was a ridiculous religious 15-year-old uh, back in the past, and I can remember that very, very strong feeling. And that's the only time I can remember the feeling of similarity as to when I see something and I walk into a theatre. Now, rather, so rather than kind of, rather than go on about, oh, you know, and I do think that there is a lot of theatre that exists in, in a kind of, uh, an accepted falsehood, an accepted dishonesty which everyone plays along with, and secretly we don't feel it. And those of us who are in the, in the, in, in the in people in this community kind of are more honest about that, um, and therefore we, we, I'm preaching to the converted to go on about that too much. Uh, and my mum and dad, particularly my dad, is the classic example of the bloke who goes along his board out of his head, doesn't admit it, and then at the end sort of goes... And, that, and, and, and feels this terrible, paralysing awkwardness. That we know. What's more exciting is to think about the freedom that is there, um, and to think of it as an existential freedom, I think. So to avoid, you know, and I think it is almost like, it is actually, I mean, it is a bit like existentialism, that there is a mauvais foi, which means, for those that don't know, it's kind of bad faith. There is a bad faith. And the bad faith comes from not accepting your freedom. Um, we are all free in every situation. And I was listening to Angela McSherry yesterday in the um, environmental one, a very moving uh, personal speech she gave about the difficulty of talking about that and, the la and the how you express that. And, 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 we've had, and that seems to be a big issue here. And there's something about freedom that's at the very heart of this. And I suppose my big, that's my provocation, is to, is to think about that and to find that we're not comfortable in the position of going, we're in the trendy bit of theatre, because we are. We're just so fucking cool. But to think about that, what that freedom really does and how to make that work and how to make that freedom in itself not boring by being didactic and... And, and pompous, but by being genuinely free. <laughs>